What was the biggest story while I was gone? Was it the Remington thing? I don't know. I was gone, too. Dude, you weren't doing the show, though. You're still following the news. I wasn't listening at all. Yeah, I think the biggest story... Uh, no, the biggest story is what happened in Canada uh, okay. with the finance minister. It's it, the, what they use the emergency powers to do. Um, they are moving towards the Great Reset. And I think the most um, misunderstood story is Remington. If you don't understand the Great Reset, you don't know what really happened there. Let's take, let's take these one by one. Canada... You know, I've been confused by the coverage of it, honestly. Like, I, I, you see some stuff from the mainstream media that these guys are the worst people in the world. On the other side, I see that these truckers are, you know, international superheroes and are perfect in every way. Is there a truth in between? Is, is it true that they're just Yeah, I don't know because, you know, it's Canada. We're not up there. Yeah. I don't know. Um, but I will tell you there's not been any violence. Right. The only violence that has happened, and it's gone unreported by the CBC and the press, uh, was a um, uh, Antifa member took their car and slammed it into a truck trying to, you know, cause right. death and damage. Sure. Uh, and that wasn't reported on. That's the only inspired violence that I know of. If you're worried about the trade situation, those trucks, those trucks are off the bridges. Yeah, okay? that was cleared on Sunday. Is yeah, right? mm-hmm. this is this is something where they're now talking about just the trucks that are peacefully protesting around the Capitol in Ottawa. When can you not do that? Uh, when? How does that make you a terrorist? My gosh, I was just in uh, the capital of Idaho, Boise, and I was going to the capital to meet some people yesterday. And uh, there's a tent city right across the street, and it the signs say, uh, stop uh, making uh, houseless people illegal. I didn't stop to talk to them about it, mm. but they're right there at the Capitol. Nobody's stopping them. Yeah, there's a bunch of teachers or whatever in another Capitol today uh, protesting, occupying the right. Capitol, no, no insurrection claims about that. One. Right. I mean, we know the coverage is inconsistent. Um, but how does this tie in? How does the what the 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 Canadian emergency order, which is, I think, I, to me, it just strikes me as really scary. Uh, I mean, it's terrifying, seems- terrifying, as terrifying as that bill on Homeland Security was last week mm. that said anybody who is using mis, dis or mal information uh, is basically a terroristic threat to the United States. Anybody who is trying to cause others to ha- question the uh, legitimacy or the, the acts of the United States government, well, that's our civic duty to do that. You're a terrorist. So what he did was, because the police came, he called in the police from all over, the Ottawa Police Department, called in all the other police departments in surrounding areas and said, you got to come and help us. Well, most of those police chiefs said, you don't have anything here. What, what are we doing? What, what do you, you can handle this. They're, they're sitting in their trucks. <laughs> and they were a little pissed that they were called in and they left, okay? So there was nothing they could do because it's a peaceful rally. So they, they hastened the Great Reset through emergency powers. And you'll notice... He wasn't up there with the chief of police or military or anybody else. He was with their biggest weapon, the finance minister. This is like Janet Yellen coming out and saying, okay, well, you know, those 912 Project Tea Party people, uh, if you have ever given money, you're now on a list of a watch list because you're a possible terrorist. Anybody who collected that money, banks can no longer serve you. You, uh, I mean, you collect all the money you want, but you won't do it on internet and you won't use any banking or banking facility, no credit cards, no processing of anything with that money. And if you do keep your money in the bank or had it in the bank, it's completely frozen. <laughs> but other than that. Other than that. Oh, and by the way, mm-hmm. if you're coming on a bus, the bus company will lose its license, will lose its license plate. And the drivers will lose their uh, their driver's license, and you won't be able to get any loans from the bank. And also, if you carry any of these people there, 
you also will lose your insurance. And what's the difference between that and the social credit score? None. Zero. That's the Great Reset. Let me explain, if I may. Yeah, please. Remington. Mm. I'm on the plane flying back yesterday, and um, I, we're out of service, but um, the guy who's with me had downloaded a news page, so we didn't have any of the details, just the headline. And it said, um, Remington settles for, what, $73 million. Uh, and his response was my response. What? What are they doing? Gun companies that fight that to the Supreme Court and you'd win. And the case was the Sandy Hook situation mm -hmm. that they were being sued because they were trying to hold them responsible for the deaths at Sandy Hook because a Remington weapon was used. Right. And a Remington weapon is also something that they allow in video games mm -hmm. that strangely the left now says makes you violent. Right. Okay. <laughs> what? Uh -oh. It's very strange. I know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, don't pay attention to the man behind the curtain. And, uh, and so they settled. Well, when I'm on the plane, I said, because I know the great reset, one of two things. First, check the board of directors of Wem Remington. See if they put new board members on Remington mm. and who they are. Well, when we got off the plane, started looking in, there are no board members. Remington is defunct. Remington yeah, was broke. during COVID, I guess. Yeah. Right. And mm -hmm. it, it broke up into several different companies. So there's no company anymore. So who settled? The insurance companies. Does anyone remember the beginnings of the Great Reset just being used by Governor Cuomo? We've got a gun problem. And, you know, this is a danger to our society and, quite honestly, a danger to our banks because our banks, well, they're the ones that, I mean, if they get involved in a gun company, and th that could pull them down. So I would say to the banks and insurance companies, do you really want to be in business with them? Because we might have to investigate you. So the banks, some of them, stopped doing business with gun make manufacturers and also gun store owners. And insurance companies were like, ah, I don't think we're going to take you. Okay, Now they've used this litigation. It's not about the $73 million. It's certainly not about Sandy Hook. And it's not even about the coming litigation for the other uh, companies. What this was about was the law being used and settled so you can't go and reopen it again. It was settled, and it was a loss. The gun companies, the insurance companies, settled and said, yes, it's their fault. Okay? Well, now, how's that going to work out for the insurance companies? Because the insurance companies were the one, not Remington. Insurance companies were on the hook for that. That's what you have insurance for. All right, now you've just opened up Pandora's box, and the left will walk through it. Everyone will sue these gun companies. The gun companies are not going to be paying that. The insurance companies will. So what happens? <laughs> One of two things. The insurance rates go sky high, which stops people from opening a gun store, opening anything, okay? Having a gun company, and their insurance rates sky high, okay? Or the insurance companies just say, you know, it's like yeah, owning land, mm -hmm. you know, in Florida, right on the ocean front. You'll have to get your own insurance because too risky for too us. risky for us. Yeah. And, you know, it, it, the, they didn't in the settlement, they didn't explicitly say it was Remington's fault. But the impact of this yep. is going to essentially enforce the idea that it was their fault. And, and even this, if this it, law, was even about, if it isn't, yeah. even if it isn't, if you can win these cases, um, and and just settle, just make it so painful that the insurance company just says, just settle it, just mm -hmm. settle it. We don't even have to admit guilt. Once these companies, the insurance companies, get hit over and over, 75 million, 100 million, just in business, no great reset, no, you mm -hmm. know, this is their plan, the, they would naturally skyrocket and companies would naturally say, guys, this, you're getting hit with yeah. too much. I can't do it. I can't do it. Isn't this similar to what has happened with Joe Rogan, where Spotify hires Rogan. They get all this heat. 
Rogan may very well stay on Spotify. I still think there's a chance of this escalating further and, and he winds up getting dropped or something. But he may very well stay on Spotify. But the damage is already done. Mm. Who, they're never going to hire you at Spotify because they know if they do, they're going to get this times 10. Mm-hmm. So they're going to edit themselves. And then you're going to have hosts who want to be hi- uh, hired by Spotify editing their own content before they even release their podcasts. I mean, it, 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 it enforces itself without a law. That's why ESG is so insidious. Mm. Because the ESG scores, like the Chinese social score, it is a, it, it's self-enforced. Okay? If they need to come in and bust your head open, they will. But instead, let's just all play nice with each other. I mean, you don't want to be a pariah in society. Right. Just do these things. That's what's happening. And the banks police themselves. The government doesn't have to police. The banks and the insurance companies are policing. You'd think the left would hate this, right? Like This seems like the type of thing that you want corporations essentially running your society. But if the corporations oh, they, do what they want. Oh, they will hate it in the end because the corporations and the banks will end up. You think the government has more power than the corporations and the banks? No way.